landmark nonpartisan review of interrogation and detention methods used in the post-9-11 era that concludes the United States engaged in torture. The 577-page report was two years in the making and found the highest officials in the George W. Bush administration were responsible. It was conducted by the Task Force on Detainee Treatment, an 11-member panel convened by the Constitution Project after President Obama chose not to support a national commission to investigate the counterterrorism programs. The authors of the report wrote that never before in U.S. history had there been, quote, the kind of considered and detailed discussions that occurred after 9-11 directly involving a president and his top advisors on the wisdom, propriety and legality of inflicting pain and torment on some detainees in our custody. The bipartisan panel was co-chaired by Asa Hutchinson, a former GOP congressman from Arkansas, NRA consultant and undersecretary of the Department of Homeland Security under President George W. Bush. We found that U.S. personnel in many instances used interrogation techniques on detainees that constitute torture. American personnel conducted an even larger number of interrogations that involved cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment. Both categories of actions violate U.S. laws and international treaty obligations. This conclusion is not based upon our own personal impressions, but rather is grounded in a thorough and detailed examination of what constitutes torture from a historical and legal context. We looked at court cases and determined that the treatment of detainees in many instances met the standards the courts have determined as constituting torture. But in addition, you look at the United States State Department in its annual country reports on human rights practices has characterized many of the techniques used against detainees in U.S. custody in the post-9-11 environment the State Department has characterized the same treatment as torture, abuse, or cruel treatment when those techniques were employed by foreign governments. The CIA recognized this in an internal review and acknowledged that many of the interrogation techniques it employed were inconsistent with the public policy positions the United States has taken regarding human rights. The United States is understandably subject to criticism when it criticizes another nation for engaging in torture and then justifies the same conduct under national security arguments. There are those that defend the techniques of like waterboarding, stress positions, and sleep deprivation because there was the Office of Legal Counsel uh, which issued a decision approving of their use because they defined them as not being torture. Those opinions have since been repudiated by legal experts and the OLC itself. And even in its opinion, it relied not only on a very narrow legal definition of torture, but also on factual representations about how the techniques would be implemented that later proved inaccurate. This is an important context as to how the opinion came about, but also as to how policymakers relied upon it. Based upon a thorough review of the available public record, we determined that in application, torture was used against detainees in many instances and across a wide range of theaters. We're going to continue now with uh, Asa Hutchinson, the former Republican Congress member and uh, former Undersecretary of Homeland Security under President George W. Bush, speaking Monday about the findings of the bipartisan task force he co-chaired on detainee treatment. While the report focused largely on the Bush administration after 9-11, it also criticized a lack of transparency under President Obama. Again, Republican co-chair Asa Hutchinson. And while our report is critical of the approval of interrogation techniques that ultimately led to U.S. personnel engaging in torture of detainees, the investigation was not an undertaking of partisan fault-finding. Our conclusions about responsibility should be taken very simply as an effort to understand what happened at many levels of the U.S. policymaking. There is no way of knowing how the government would have responded if a Democrat administration were in power at the time of the attacks. Indeed, our report is equally critical 
of the rendition to torture program which began under President Clinton, and we question several actions of the current administration as well. It should be noted that many of the corrective actions that uh, were first undertaken during the Bush administration uh, as well. But the task force did conclude that the na nation's highest officials after the 9-11 attack approved actions for CIA and defense personnel based upon legal guidance that has since been repudiated. The most important decision may have been to declare the Geneva Convention did not apply to al-Qaeda and Taliban captives in Afghanistan or Guantanamo. The administration never specified what rules would apply instead. The task force believes that U.S. defense intelligence professionals and service members in harm's way need absolutely clear orders on the treatment of detainees, requiring at a minimum compliance with common Article III of the Geneva Convention. This was not done. Civilian leaders and military commanders have an affirmative responsibility to ensure that their subordinates comply with the laws of war. President Obama has committed to observe the Geneva Conventions through an executive order, but a future president could change it by the stroke of a pen. Asa Hutchinson, former Republican congressman from Arkansas and undersecretary of the Department of Homeland Security under President George W. Bush, speaking Monday about the findings of the bipartisan task force on detainee treatment. For more, we go to Washington, D.C., by to Laura Pitter, counterterrorism advisor at Human Rights Watch. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Laura. Can you talk about the significance of this report? And the man who's delivering the findings, Asa Hutchinson, was just in the news as an NRA consultant pushing armed guards in the schools. He is President Bush's uh, administration official, the Undersecretary of Homeland Security. Yeah, the report is very significant for the fact that this was a bipartisan commission that included individuals both on the Republican and the Democratic side with high levels of extensive national security experience. And they intended to look at the record objectively without any preconceived notions. And they ultimately came to the, to the conclusion that the U.S. engaged in torture, and they found that the evidence was indisputable, and they found this without reservation. So it's very significant, because, as you know, many of the former Bush administration officials who were in charge of authorizing the abuse and other senior-level intelligence officials who were involved in implementing the abuse have denied that what the U.S. did in its name to hundreds of detainees in U.S. custody was torture. So, really, the, this commission should put those denials to rest. It, it clearly was, const it was torture, and this commission found so. Uh, Laura Peter, can you uh, explain a little how the task force was put together? Uh, they were apparently 11 members, and they represented quite a wide range uh, from within the Bush administration. Is that correct? And, and, and subsequent administrations. And who chose them? Uh, well, the Constitution Project was in charge of, you know, putting the panel together, and they tried to get people, you know, very senior-level people who had national security experience, both former Congress people in the judiciary and medical experts um, from both sides of the political spectrum. And the objective was, because it was clear that Congress was unwilling to look into a commission of inquiry to analyze what had happened historically uh, post-9-11. Uh, there was an initiative, a legislation for a commission of inquiry, sort of like a truth commission, that was not uh, accepted in Congress. And then Obama clearly said that it was more important for him to look forward than to look back. They felt like it was important um, to all Americans um, that they analyze what the U.S. did post 9 11 to the detainees in custody, given, given the widespread level of abuse and the authorization at the most senior levels. They felt like it was an, an important part to uh, preserve U.S., um, you know, moral credibility in the world. And so that's how the commission started. Yeah, President Obama disagrees with this? I, he, I don't know if I've he disagrees. Been a reaction. Well, he would not. Um, he would not commission the study. He did not want this to move forward. So that's why it's. Uh, is that right? Can you talk about the progression of how this happens, starting with Senator Leahy, uh, um, head of judiciary? 
So Senator Leahy uh, introduced legislation uh, for a commission of inquiry, sort of like a truth commission. And it, Congress did not accept that. And then the Obama administration had made very clear that it was more important to them to look forward rather than to look backward. Uh, so they also chose not to do any kind of uh, thorough investigation of the wide-scale abuse that was, you know, and it was overwhelming evidence of, of serious and widespread abuse. So that is why this commission um, gathered and decided to look into it from a bipartisan perspective. Um, and, you know, come to its conclusions with, without any preconceived notions about what those conclusions might be. The task force on detainee treatment also condemned the force feeding of prisoners who go on hunger strike as a form of protest, a situation that's right now underway at Guantanamo. It's believed the majority of prisoners are on hunger strike. This is Dr. Gerald Thompson, a professor of medicine emeritus at Columbia University, former president of the American College of Physicians. We do not believe that force feeding should be an approach to the hunger strike. If you can imagine being a detainee and using refusal to eat as a form of protest, and then you are forced to eat, forced physically to eat by being strapped into a specially made chair and restrained having restraints put on your limbs, your arms, your legs, your body, your head so you cannot move, having a tube inserted into your throat that extends into your stomach, and you're trying to resist that with the only muscles that are free in your throat. Pain, discomfort, obviously. But in, in addition to that, food is then forced in a liquid form into your stomach. You're kept in the chair for at least two hours, usually more than two hours, to prevent you from vomiting and uh, undermining the force feeding. You can't go to the bathroom during that time. Your dignity is taken away. The World Medical Association and international officials have clearly identified that process as cruel, inhuman, uh, and degrading treatment. And whatever the, given the level of brutality, it could extend to torture.